you be in my comments like saying like we need to get away from the Western way of things and y'all be having the most Western way of thinking. Just because I'm feminine doesn't mean that I have no goals and zero ambition for my life. Being feminine means basking in the natural order of things and how I was created. Doesn't mean that I don't have goals and ambitions, but it means that I allow myself to be a woman and I allow men to be men. You feel me? I don't like in, in the business world. A lot of times we have to step into some masculine energy in order to get things done. But it means leaving that in the workplace. Like when I'm working and when I'm handling business, I might step into it a little bit to handle my business, to make sure that things get done because everyone has a duality in them. Men and women both have masculine and feminine energy. And I can tap more into the masculine energy when I'm in a, in a, in a business setting where that type of energy is required. But it's knowing how to relinquish some of that and understand the settings that I'm in. If I'm in a setting with my man or with someone that I'm dating or someone that I'm getting to know, I can... I can pull back on that and then allow the feminine energy to come out more because the masculine and the feminine complement each other, right? So all I'm saying is this. It's very simple. It doesn't mean that you have to be the picture of femininity and you have to change who you are as a person. It's just allowing yourself just to be. It means not having to be hard all the time as a woman because we don't have to be hard all the time. And that's what like messes us up because we be hard when we don't have to and it, and it bothers us. It, it um, causes all sorts of ailments and stress within our bodies. And then it makes it harder for our men to understand us. You know what I'm saying? It makes it harder for them to really understand where they fit into our lives if we're going to absorb both the masculine and the feminine roles. You know what I'm saying? Or a little bit more masculine and less feminine. They don't even understand where they're supposed to fit into our lives. How do they fit? You know what I'm saying? So all I'm saying is that there is a beautiful duality that we can explore as women and it doesn't take anything away from us. It doesn't mean that we're less than or that we're weaker or that we're subservient or anything of the sort. I need us to understand that the word feminine is not synonymous with weak. For some strange reason, men and women have become have have started to believe this, that femininity is synonymous with weakness and being subservient. That doesn't that isn't what that is. We have to understand that there is a power in masculinity and femininity. And when both of them work together, when there's a balance of both of those things, that's when you really get power. Just like a battery, you need the positive and the, neg and the negative charge. You need those two opposing forces that complement each other to come together and make power. Right. It's the same thing with the masculine and the feminine energy. Both those two opposing forces come together to make power. And when we as women operate with too much masculine energy, it's like a battery having two negative sides. You're not going to get any power from that. And when men walk around here with too much feminine energy, it's the same thing. You're not going to get any power from that. So it's understanding the balance, okay? That's all I'm saying for everybody who's upset and thinking that I'm saying we as women need to take a step back into the dark ages and be weak. That's not what I'm saying at all. Please understand that I'm a businesswoman. You feel me? I own two businesses and that doesn't make me masculine or anything because I know how to balance the energies that I have inside of me. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. Okay, so I just want everybody to understand that people, you know, start to get in my comments and get a little upset and they don't understand what I'm what I'm saying or what I'm communicating. I'm just saying it's much easier. And going back to like the movies and how we're depicted, I said that in slavery, we were not allowed to be feminine. The only time our femininity was acknowledged, like I always say, was to fulfill the lust of the slave master. The slave master decides he wants to rape one of our women. Now, all of a sudden, we're women now. He, could, he acknowledges the facts that we're women, right? So that's the only time our femininity was acknowledged. We need to understand that we fight against something that we've never had the luxury to be. When we as women say things like, oh, I don't need a man or I can do it all by myself. First of all, that's a lie. No one could do it all by themselves. No one is truly independent. Everybody needs somebody. So to even insinuate that is it goes against our character to say so, right? So we have to understand that because we, we we don't even know what it means to allow someone to to come in and 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 um and carry some of the weight for us. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. When we have people in our lives that come in and they are able to carry some of the weight so that we don't have to carry it all ourselves because it gets exhausting. I talked about this like a month ago about how we as black women sometimes we we're doing too much and it gets exhausting. And we should allow people to come into our lives ones who who can 
to carry the weight for us. You know what I'm saying? To carry some of the weight so that we don't have to carry it all on our own because we were never intended to do so. You know? So even in movies, you know, like Wonder Woman, I didn't see the new Wonder Woman that came out, but the one before it, the, the first Wonder Woman that came out, she was such a strong and powerful woman, wasn't she? Wasn't she incredibly powerful? Wasn't she incredibly strong? But do you see how she was still feminine? She was still feminine. They make sure that they do that with their women. White women always get the luxury of being strong, resilient, and feminine. It's not an either or for them like it is for us. We don't get that full representation. You know what I'm saying? We don't get that a lot. You know, and like as much as I love, like I loved Black Panther, but the, the, the women warriors, they were not um, as feminine, even though they were really dope. They were not, they were not as feminine. Now, I'm not saying that it's just a terrible and a bad thing because it was still dope. I still really enjoyed the movie, but I'm just saying the depictions that we get between black women versus other women, we don't get that same depiction of where we, where we're able to bask in our femininity. Wonder Woman is like the, one of the strongest people on, on the earth. You know what I'm saying? And she still got to be strong and feminine. So all I'm saying is we as black women, we should really like bask in this femininity thing and see what it's all about. Since we've never had the luxury to be so, we've never had the luxury to, to, to bask in that and to allow ourselves to, to, to be balanced within our energies. You know, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And it's not just about the hair. Someone said bald headed. A woman could have short hair and still be feminine. It's it's not based on your hairstyle. It's based on the energy that you exude. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a difference. So I don't want people in here, you know, putting too many parameters on it. Like you have to have long hair. You have to. No, you could still be feminine and have a short do. Remember Nia Long when she was um on uh, the Fresh Prince as, as Will's... Uh, fiance or whatever she had a short dude the whole time you feel me still looks feminine so it's it's not about the hair it's just about the the energy that you exude you know what i'm saying the energy that we exude and understanding that these energies that we have there's nothing like negative about it you know there's there's this negative connotation attached to femininity to where it's just seen as weak even the things that are considered traditionally feminine roles, so to speak, is considered less than. And I don't understand that. Like, just just look at, like, how we look at things like cooking and cleaning. If I say cooking and cleaning, automatically everybody gets upset. Like, oh, how dare. I don't want to be, I don't want my existence to be tied to such menial labor and menial work. I mean, is it menial, really? Like the fact that we that we consider these things to be menial is a problem. Do you know how important it is? You, the reason why I don't get sick to this day like that, the reason why I be healthy, the reason why I don't have any allergies and ailments, the reason why I didn't be all broke up, have cast on and ankle sprain and stuff all the time. The reason why I'm not like that is because my mama cooked. Both my parents worked, but my mother, she prided herself with preparing a meal for her family. And we were all strong and healthy because she cooked. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a negative thing. It's not to say, oh, this is bad or that was menial work or menial labor. The, 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 the person who cooks in the household is the healer. You can either heal your family or kill your family with what you feed them. It's one of the most important things you could ever do. So I don't see it as something that's beneath me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's important. I can kill somebody slowly by what I feed them. Or I can give them life. You know what I'm saying? It just depends. It depends on how important I see these things. Cleaning. You guys know that like two-thirds of Europe's population died off because people didn't clean, right? Because niggas was dirty out there. They was out there not washing their hands, letting the animals live in the house with the people. Just being gross. Two thirds of the whole population died because they was nasty. And then you people act like cleaning is such a menial task. You know, these are like really important things. And if you knew how to cook, you wouldn't be mad like about cooking because you enjoy seeing people eat your food and like go get seconds. 
and like be trying to scrape the last grain of rice off the plate. You be looking like, yeah, I did that. It's good, huh? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, let's stop with this idea that things that are related to femininity are less than or weaker or less important because they're not. You know what I'm saying? They're very, very, very important. The things associated with femininity are the most important things and the building blocks to the foundation of healthy people and healthy families. You know, the building blocks. It really is. So that's just what I wanted to say. I I need for us to get away from this idea that, that there's something weak or something subservient or something just not um, worth honoring about femininity. That's what I want us to get away from. We got to get away from that. Femininity is beautiful. You know? Femininity is beautiful. And it doesn't mean that only women could cook or anything like that. Like, I don't want anybody to take any type of weird um, ideas away from this. All I'm saying is, like, we have to stop associating things that are traditionally seen as women's work or whatever as something that's less than. Because that's the reason why we have a rift in our families is because... We don't um, we don't understand how important each other's roles are. Like what men contribute is very, very important and very necessary. And what, when, what women contribute is very, very important and very necessary. You know what I'm saying? So and, and, and it doesn't matter who's cooking, whether or not it's the man or the woman. But the reason why I brought that up is because a lot of times cooking and cleaning are traditionally associated with women's roles and I want us to get away from the idea that those things are like menial and subservient tasks you know what I'm saying that's all I'm saying if you guys understand me and someone asked if I like big old men or whatever big old strong hulky brawny guys I guess um the answer is eh it depends you know I like whoever makes me feel safe you know whether or not he's big because I've dated a guy that was like six four You know, and um, I dated a guy who was like five, eight, five, nine, maybe on a good day, (laughs) you know, and the one who was like five, nine made me feel safer than the one who was six, four. So it's about who makes me feel safe when I'm around him. I don't have to be watching my back and looking at everything and checking out everything because I know he's doing that. He makes me feel safe. You know, so that's what it's about. That's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna get off.